Web3 startups can spend months building a dApp only for it to not gain the traction they were hoping for. To avoid this, you need a carefully planned product development framework, and that's what we'll be talking about in our video today. Hi, my name is Chirag, and I have over 12 years of experience working with product development teams helping them achieve a go-to-market fit. In this quick video, I'll be sharing four key steps that can help you build a project that your users will love. So let's jump right in. The first question you need to ask is, who is really facing the problem I'm attempting to solve? For example, if you're building a DeFi app, you may ask, is it an individual investor, a high net worth investor, or an institutional investor that I'm targeting. Before writing a single line of code, you need to have an idea of whose life are you improving? What are the things they truly care about? What are the current problems that they face with existing solutions, etc.? And since Web3 is all about community, you can quickly validate your ideas by writing a white paper setting up your Discord channel, and building a community of your target users to see what they think about your idea. You can find early community members by talking with your existing connections, family and friends, or joining existing Web3 communities. The next step is finding a problem solution fit, which is all about validating that the problem you have identified is something that your users will really care about and that your solution addresses it. If you don't do this step, it will be very hard to build a successful MVP. To validate problem solution fit, talk to as many users as you can. Before speaking to users, make sure to write down your questions that you would like to ask. And keep your questions as open-ended as possible to remove any bias. If you have time, you can also do quantitative surveys. If you do, keep them short, not more than 10 questions, and keep in mind that you may have to reach out to about 100 users to get 10 responses on an average. Let's now talk about competition. While you shouldn't focus on competitors too much, it's a good idea to look at all the existing solutions your users care about and use. You should try to use these solutions yourselves and identify any potential issues that you see. This could also be a great set of questions for your user interviews. When evaluating competitors, make sure to differentiate them by blockchain. Some products may be chain specific, whereas others could be chain agnostic you may give more weightage on products that exist on the chain that you're building for. The most important point here is to map out your competitors' strengths and weaknesses and come up with areas you can differentiate yourselves. Products with little differentiation always face tough competition and have a hard time in gaining user traction. Also, it goes without saying that you should pay close attention to the ever-evolving regulatory landscape in your geography. Now it's time to build your minimum viable product or MVP. MVP helps you to ruthlessly prioritize and build the most necessary features first. Question every new feature request and build only what's necessary. It's great to keep in mind the 80-20 rule that 80% of outputs or impact will come from 20% of inputs or effort. Once your MVP is ready, get this out quickly in the hands of your users. You may have to nudge them a few times or show them a live demo to get them to use it. Gather as much feedback as possible for the, on the MVP. Get anecdotal feedback from your users to validate the MVP against the initial problems and opportunities you had identified. Also, bonus points for building a way to gather analytics into your MVP. Once you have a successful MVP, you can start rapidly iterating on your DAP. 
categorize potential features into must-haves, nice-to-haves, and add-ons to make them easier to prioritize. Set key performance indicators that give you transparency as to whether a feature is successful. And that's a wrap. We hope you found this content useful. Of course, it is much easier said than done. Building a startup is really tough, but we hope that this four-step process provided you with an effective tool to prioritize your time and focus on the most important aspects to build a product that your users will love and use.